there's this parable about the capitalist and the fisherman where the capitalist sees a fisherman and says, what are you doing? And he goes, well, I'm catching some fish. And then later on, I'm going to spend some time with my friends and family. And the capitalist says, well, you're doing it all wrong. You're only going a couple hours a day. So you can increase your production by going more hours, hiring more fishermen, and then you can make all this money. And then the fisherman goes, what will I do with it at the end? And the capitalist goes, well, then you can spend all your money and retire with your friends and family. And the fisherman goes, well, I'm doing that right now. And I really like that parable because it's about having a very sustainable life, which is what I'm more interested in than one that's uh, big scale. And that's why a lot of times the people who I look up to are solopreneurs because they've been able to bootstrap, they've built something on their own, it sustains them. It seems like they're doing this so that they can have more freedom in their own lives and do the things that they love doing. I always wanted to work to live rather than live to work because I always saw income as a way to help me sustain my lifestyle. I also really love stories of people transitioning from corporate to something else. A lot of the creators I follow who become corporate dropouts, I think already have a pretty successful YouTube channel, whereas I'm starting from scratch. So I'm not monetized. I don't expect to monetize for another two years. So this can't be my form of active income. Instead, this is more to share what I'm learning as I go through this transition. And hopefully that's more relatable because probably a lot of people who are looking at a life transition are not also successful content creators at the moment either. It's been two months since I've been unemployed. And the way I think about it is you can spend 30 grand on a master's degree one to two years and I'm basically doing a self-directed master's in life right now because the outcome of this six months to one year period would be a new career, a new direction based on whatever I experienced during the last six to 12 months. And if I do it well and successfully, I expect I'll make back the money I invested in myself because I'll have gained this new experience, skills, connections, whatever it is. Some of this video was filmed two months ago and some of it was filmed more recently. I'm really glad I vlogged these earlier parts because it shows how I've changed my mindset in the last two months. Okay, <clears throat> I am a Harvard graduate. I went to Goldman Sachs and worked there for six years and then I worked at a startup for the last two years as a product manager. And I've been doing this very controlled, structured path through life, doing the things that would be highly prestigious and going after status for a lot of my life. And now I'm 30 years old and I'm at a period where I'm going to take my first t bit of time off in between jobs. And actually, I'm looking to try something different after product management because I've been doing it for eight years, but I really did enjoy it for the first uh, part of my career. And then towards the later end, I just think I needed a change. Um, okay, since I don't know yet what I want, I'm going to document this series so that you and I can follow along to see how I figure out one, can I find a way to sustain a living and make sh uh, another path for myself that isn't traditional product management? The backup plan is if I can't, after six months, I'll reevaluate and then go back to a traditional path or we'll talk about any other learnings along the way. Uh, number two is can I find a way to continue my travel heavy lifestyle. Right now I've just gone through a period of lots of travel so I'm happy I get to get all this life experience. I'm also living in London right now. I've made these friends in London that I don't want to part ways with. Do I stay in London another year? My birthday is coming up. I'll be turning 31 soon. So it's a time of thinking. What do I do next? And last thing is yeah, I'll take you along on how I figure out my new path in life. Because this is a very rare inflection point that I get to have, where I have the means to not work for a short period of time. I'm sure I'm going to want to learn something new about myself, where I'm going to go uh, and try something different. I started this new project 
with someone that my friend put us in touch. It was to start a dim sum pop-up. So I did a lot of cooking and weighed some social media posts about reviewing dim sum restaurants. What I learned from this experience is that opening a business for me is a more slow and steady kind of project. I want to be doing this on my own for fun for some time before jumping into launching a business around anything. One thing I realized is I'm not a fake it till you make it type of person. I really need to believe in something before I feel comfortable setting up a structure and a business around it. And I jumped into this one a bit too quickly. Some people have the confidence that they can launch and get tons of users, get tons of people interested, be able to serve tons of people. But for me, I'm a lot more conservative and a lot more risk adverse when it comes to putting on events. So it was very much out of my comfort zone. In the end, we realized to be successful, you need somebody with a lot more restaurant experience. As I start on this journey to find my path, I've been thinking about the people who have inspired me. Their stories and similar paths to me have inspired how I think about my next path. And here are three lessons I've gotten from their stories. Number one is iterate. Peter Levels was entrepreneurial from the start, and he ran something called 12 Startups in 12 Months. So his goal was to build a startup each month. These startups were all bootstrapped. Every month, he would reflect on his successes. If it wasn't successful, he would shut it down and start another idea until he launched Nomad List, which took off, and he's still running that today. He also launched OK Remote, which is one of the largest remote job search websites in the world. And the lesson I've taken from that is to try things Try things each month, and if it doesn't work out, move on to the next idea. It doesn't have to be perfect, and it doesn't have to be perfectly planned. Number two, embrace being multi-passionate. Patricia Mo is a former product manager turned entrepreneur. She founded The Commons, which is a third space in San Francisco. She's passionate about community, she's passionate about interior design, and she has a whole newsletter dedicated to rabbit holes that she goes down. The lesson I'm taking from that is that there is a way to start something new while embracing the fact that you have many interests. Plus, she is a former product manager as well, so she has a similar career path. The third guideline is not to let your skills hold you back. I learned about Linda Zhang through her newsletter, Product Lessons. She's also launched two other websites, one for finding top startups to join and another one for optimizing your Reddit posts. And she bootstrapped both. And two of her products are built with no code. She also writes about how she learned to code and how she learned how to launch these products without knowing to code at first. Like me, she started a career in product management and now she's an entrepreneur building in public. Having these three people and guidelines to serve as the North Star has helped me think about my decision and de-risk some of the choices I'm making because I see how other people have done it well and how they've bootstrapped and been launching successfully without going big. They found something sustainable, they're embracing their passions, and it serves as a blueprint for me. For me, I think it's just running some experiments to see what I can do. The first month, my experiment was just creating videos. The second month, I was meant to launch a product, and I didn't launch anything. I've also started wanting more and more to launch a physical product. My background is in software products and developing software products and working with engineers, but I've been wanting to do something more hands-on because I feel like we're all on our phones way too much. I have eye strain because I'm looking at my phone all the time. I would prefer to have us getting off the phone more into the real world. I think that's where everything's going. I've really been enjoying hosting events. So I would like to do something that's a bit more physical, a bit more tangible. Maybe this will end up being a software product later because I might have to apply for an accelerator and for an accelerator, those uh, projects that get any interest or traction are probably software projects, but I still want to run a small experiment in the next month or so. Right now, in a very, I'm in a very exploratory mode, so doing a lot. Um, so some of the things that I have that I still need to edit include going to London Tech Week and hosting tech events. And I had two potential business ventures that 
I was exploring as well. So in the next few videos, I am going to cover more of life in London, some of the activities I've done, some of the communities that I've joined that I've found a lot of value in, and also talk about two business ventures that I tried out and what my learnings were for those. Let me know if you have another name for this series. Thanks for watching.